Welcome to One Book, One Review. Today's book is Jonathan Safran First Tree of Cuts. Okay. This book needs a little introduction as it's more than just a novel. First of all, you need to understand that I just love Jonathan Safran First writing. So when I see he has published a new book, I just hit the order button without thinking about it or even looking what it is about. This way, I already bought Eating Animals, which I didn't read for months after learning that it's a non-fiction about vegetarianism. But when I finally read it, I loved the way it was written. You'd think I learned from this experience and would check what he wrote before ordering now. But not me, no way. <laughs> when I saw the Tree of Coats was available for pre-order, I ignored the high price and just hit the order button. But the book never came. The release date was removed from Amazon.de and my order remained open. Getting annoyed and curious, I asked a friend who was in California at that time to get it for me. To help her find the right book, I wanted to send her a link to it on Amazon.com. To my surprise, the book wasn't available in the US anymore either, and used copies were sold for $150 and more. Now, I really wanted to get that book. To shorten this, Amazon.de cancelled my order, as the book wouldn't be published in Germany anymore and I managed to get a hold of a second edition from the UK, only three months after I placed my first order. Up to then, all I knew about the book was that it was a die cut of his favorite book, The Street of Crocodiles by Bruno Schulz. What I couldn't imagine was what that actually meant. So when I finally held the book in my hands, I was overwhelmed. This is by far the coolest I have ever seen. The book's pages have holes in them. Every page contains text on lots of empty space. The cutout pieces allow you to read what's written on the next page. This way, you can read many different layers at once. For this alone, it was worth buying the book, but it didn't tell me how to read it. I kept opening it and looking at it a little clueless for a few days. And then one day, I just started reading. I read it from page to page the first time, reading everything that was visible. This way, I read a lot of similar pages with minor changes to the sentences and the content. I cannot say I discovered a real story. However, sometimes among a string of senseless words and letters, a wonderful and powerful sentence would appear that was so beautiful that it just stood out from all the rest. For the first reading, I decided that was its purpose. As a reader, I could see the wonderful language so much better than when it was hidden in a compelling story that was also well written. The second time I read the book, I decided to cover all the information that was under the pages that I was reading. This way, I found a story. It was nice, but a little colorless. I had the feeling it was missing something. The language was less beautiful, but the content was visible. The third time I read the book, I read two pages as one. This time, I couldn't see anything. Neither the story nor the language were charming, and from there on, the book became alive. There were many ways of reading this book, and many stories to discover. In the beginning, I was obsessed with the question how to find the real story to it. But the more I read in the book, the less I think there is a real story to it, but an endless number of experiences to be made. It is a crazy book, an interesting piece of art, and I'm glad I bought it. I'm looking forward to having many more great moments with it. At the moment, I'm reading Room by Emma Donoghue. Thanks for watching One Book, One Review.